Hello, I'm Trevor Lewis, and this is another video from the Voyager Middle School STEAM Lab. This is a video where I'm going to show you how to do layers in, in uh, Inkscape. This is an example where I have multiple shapes in multiple layers, and it creates this illusion of depth. Uh, this is a project that's actually modified from a drawing project uh, that Ms. Goodall is using in her art class. I will post a link to an example video of the drawing version of this project in the description of this video. Um, so what I'm going to show you is how I did this. Right now there are multiple objects here. So if I scroll back here you can kind of see what's going on. I've got a really big object here that's providing this um, these windows to these smaller objects underneath. Let's scroll back a little bit and let's move the big object out of the way. So what I started with was actually just one drawing. That's the drawing. This one drawing is what gave me all of these shapes. So uh, you can see I have multiple copies of the drawing. I'm holding control on the keyboard to scroll my mouse in and out. So if I lay these out like this, you can see these are all of my, my drawings. If uh, I was going to use this on the laser cutter to physically assemble this, I could lay them out side by side like this and export it as a DXF and then cut each one out of a different color of paper. Or I could cut these out of uh, acrylic. Maybe I could cut them out of a translucent acrylic and stack them to make a really cool effect and I could have them on a bit a background like this so that's how I did this let me go through the steps real quick you can see I also used a gradient to provide a little bit of shading difference when I set this up um, that's a little bit of an optional extra step at the end so what you're gonna do first is you need these lines so we're gonna use what we learned about the Bezier tool to do that. So what I'm gonna do is, I'll just clear off my canvas here. This is the page right here. If I wanna save an SVG file, I want my final product to be on this page, otherwise it won't show up in the preview. But right now, I, when I'm working, I don't want these lines in my way, so I'm just gonna work over here. I'm gonna use the Bezier tool to draw my curves. And I'm gonna click and drag. So I'm gonna click and drag. And the way you draw your curves, how many how many uh, anchors there are really matters. I'm going to finish by clicking on this and see it turns red that square and when I click and drag if I click and drag on that square it'll make them all sort of connected to each other. And as I'm drawing these what I'm thinking about is actually the space in between because that's the space that is going to end up being those different colors. These, um, th these shapes that I'm drawing are actually going to end up being little windows. Now if I don't like the way I drew something, like I don't really love how lumpy that is, I can always come back here with the edit by paths node or F2 on the keyboard and I can change these paths. Right? I can grab these handles and I can change them. I can select individual nodes and I say I want that, that to be a smooth node instead of being able to be a pointy node. I can also select an individual node and decide that I actually don't need it and press delete on the keyboard. I can also add nodes by just double clicking and I'll add a node there and I can modify the shape. I can also select um, a line segment like this and I can press add nodes and I can press that several times to add some more nodes and then that can provide different shapes. So by changing just little bits like that you can have very different qualities of line. So what you're going to do is you're just going to click and drag to make smooth shapes or you can use jagged shapes if you'd like but the effect that I achieved was with smooth shapes you're going to think about how much space you're leaving in between the shapes because that's going to be the area that you're going to have and you're going to try and leave some windows you can see there's three shapes at this intersection but you could also end up with four shapes or five shapes or six shapes even at one intersection so you might want to try a variety and what you're gonna do is you're gonna end up with a lot of shapes so there's four at that intersection I just made a random click there I didn't even mean to but let's use that as a starting point point. and if you want to vary thicknesses you can see this is really thick here but you can also grab the move tool or F1 on the keyboard and use the arrow keys and just nudge things around until you get things to be the thicknesses that you want Okay, um, and if you end up with a gap, like you can see there's sort of a gap forming here, you can do a couple of different things. You could draw a shape that fills the gap by ha being long and pointy, or if you end up with a gap like this, and you decide that that gap's too much, 
Ooh, I don't like that. I'm going to come back to that. If you decide that th this gap is too much, just draw a little one. So let's look at this real quick. This sort of ruins the illusion because my line does a loop-de-loop. -loop. So I'm going to go in here and I can s click on here. You can see I've got really long uh, handles on this. And these nodes are maybe a little too close together. This one's also not smooth. So I can move them around or I can click on them and I can delete them and I can sort of see what, what's happening there. You can see you can make a sharp point here if it's not a smooth node. You can click on it and say you want it to be a smooth node or a symmetric node or an auto smooth node. Auto smooth will make it smooth no matter how you make changes, right? It'll just automatically smooth things out. So you can see even though I'm modifying this line, it's affecting this line, okay? So you're going to do this, and you're going to want a pretty big field because you're only going to make one of these. Okay, so I sped that part up a little bit. Now I want to look at these shapes. So I've got a, a pretty good field of shapes, and you can see I've got some intersections here and some interesting things. I would spend some time on this and really think about the quality of line. Do you want everything to be really smooth? Do you want some things to be jagged? The way you set up these lines will really affect the way your finished product looks. So let's look at these. So these are all individual shapes right now. Okay, And if I select them all by clicking and dragging around them, I can set the fill to whatever color by clicking right down here on these fill colors. So these shapes, um, I can change the color of them by clicking these fill, but actually what I want is these spots in between the shapes to be the parts that are filled in, which is not what's happening. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to draw a, a rectangle around the whole thing, and you can make the rectangle quite large. In fact, you'd probably want it to be pretty large. But now I can't see anything because it's the same color and it's on top. So this is where layers is going to come in. I'm going to switch back to the select tool. So I've got this rectangle selected. I'm going to switch its color so you can tell what's going on. It's super bright yellow, but the shapes behind it are still dark. So I can't see those shapes because this yellow is on top. So if you look at my hands here, each layer has an object. And I can set the opacity. I've got my fill and stroke window open here. If you go to object, you can open fill and stroke. I can set the opacity by just cranking it down a little bit. Now it's a little bit see-through. I can see those shapes through it. Let's crank it all the way back up. Another thing I can do is I can use these, these buttons right up here. So then they have keyboard shortcuts too. So I can move it all the way to the bottom. I can go one step at a time, up or down, or all the way to the top. Let's go one step at a time. If I go one step at a time, I'm putting it under one of these objects at a time. If I want it under all of the objects, I just say, move it all the way to the back. So now this looks like sort of what I want, where these are holes. But when I put it all together, I can't show my other layers through these holes because they're not actually holes. They're filled in with this color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a Boolean operator. So I'm going to select the whole thing, all of my objects, and I'm going to go to Path and look at my Boolean operators. So you might think that difference is going to do what you want, and it might. Um, but if you look at exclusion here, this actually works pretty well. Sometimes combine works really well. Let's try combine. You can see combine works really well, but for some reason um, in this mode, it didn't combine these correctly. It didn't poke those into holes. So combine is not working consistently for me. It, it's choosing some of these to be combined in some ways and some ways not. So all I'm going to try is I'm going to try exclusion. And you see with exclusion, What's happened is these are actually empty space. And the way you can tell that that's empty space is let's draw another rectangle. And I'm going to make this one a dark color. Um, you might want to choose a, a color palette down here, like a, a monochrome color palette, and just pick right here. In my original example, I used red. I'm going to choose this, make this one as dark as possible. And then I'm going to move it back behind. So I'm going to go back. You can see I don't have those buttons for back behind. So I have to go back to the select tool. So I'm not in the rectangle tool. And then I get those back and I can go all the way to the back. Okay. So um, you got to keep, keep track of which palette you're in. I might have lost track of which one. I think I'm in this palette right here. So that was this one, right? So maybe I'm going to go from very light to very dark because maybe it's like down deep in a hole. So this this one that I've got, this layer that I've got here, if this is the next layer up, right, I can take the next color up and just do that. And then I can duplicate this. And the way I did that was I did Control D on the keyboard, but I can also choose Duplicate here. 
and I can move this. So if I move it, one way I can move it is I can just m slide it over and let other parts show through. Let's change the color of this one to the next layer up. Now, what I can do here is I can also scale it, and I can scale it, I can stretch it, I can do different l things like this. I don't want it to line up, because then it looks like the exact same version. I can also click on it one more time, and that switches it to rotate mode, so I can give it a little bit of a twist. But it's hard to envision what this is going to look like in the end right now, like this, and I can always adjust it later, but I can build up one layer at a time, or I can also jump to that top layer so I can have that top layer on top so let's do that right now I'm gonna duplicate this one more time duplicate now you can't tell that I did anything because it's right on top if I move it you can see it I'm gonna set this to a very very light green like that almost white and then what I'm gonna do I'm gonna hold control on the keyboard and scroll back I only want a couple of these holes I want them to be bigger because they're higher up so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make this bigger. I'm going to hold the shift key so I can make it bigger centered. And I'm looking at these holes as I'm stretching this and I'm thinking about which holes I want to keep. Right? And maybe it's only maybe it's only three holes or maybe it's only these four holes. And these other holes I want to get rid of because you can see it's sort of off of it's showing the edges of my work and I don't like that. So here's what I'm going to do. This is kind of cool. So this is one object altogether. But if I choose path and I choose um, break apart. It's going to turn it all into separate objects. Now, did you remember which ones you wanted to keep? I think I'm going to keep these three holes only. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the shift key on the keyboard while everything is selected and click on those three. It will unselect those. And then I'm going to click on the background because I want to keep that too. So now all of these are just the ones I want to get rid of. So I'm going to let go of shift on the keyboard and press delete and they're gone. Then I'm going to hold shift key again, select the three that I have and the background, and in, I'm going to do the opposite of break apart, which is combine. So now I have my little window onto those deeper layers. And I've got the, the very darkest green, the next one up, the next one up. But I can add some more too, and I can change the size and I can rotate them. So right now I can tell I have the lightest green selected because it's right here in the fill. So if I click here though, through that window, you can see I'm selecting this one instead. I'm going to duplicate it. Control D, duplicate. You can see it's on the top layer now, so it's showing through. So now I want to change the color of this one. You can see the that lighter green is right there. So now I'm going to go here and I'm going to figure out which one's the next one up. So that one is the next one up because if that one's the same one. So I'm going to go that one right there. That's the next one up. And then I can modify it a little bit. Let's give it a little bit of a stretch. Let's give it a click and then a little bit of a rotate to give some new lines. And I don't really know how I like the look of this yet because it's on the wrong layer. Let's go here and I'm going to move it back one layer just underneath that top layer. And then so then I can see I don't really love how this is. I'm going to click on it one more time. And then when I click on it like that, I can use the arrow keys to just sort of nudge it. It's look a little too similar to what's underneath it. So I'm moving it around, trying to create the illusion that some of this is a little bit different. Maybe I'll give it a little stretch. Okay, so I like that. So now I'm going to click on it again, and I'm going to duplicate. It jumps to the front. I'm going to go up one step when it comes to how bright it is. I'm going to move it. I'm going to scale it. And I'm going to drop it back one layer. And if you want to, you can actually end up with different shapes. You can see it's peeking out there, but I can always resize that rectangle. And I can create this sort of layers, and you can go as many layers as you'd like, but it does create that sense of depth. So now what I can do, let's I'm going to edit this one, and the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to double-click it, and I'm just going to grab this node right here, and I'm going to drag it down to make sure I cover my bases there. And now I'm going to select all of my stuff. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to group it. The reason I'm going to group it is because I want to move it around. I want to I want to resize it and put it on here so that I can see it when I save it as an SVG. But now it'll all move as one group together. So I can't see where the page is because I keep covering it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the opacity. And since it's grouped, it reduces the opacity of everything. But you can see the lower layers aren't showing through the top layers because it's all grouped together. 
So then I can hold the shift key when I'm resizing to maintain, oh, sorry, not the shift key, the control key. Hold the control key and it will resize and not change and get stretched out. So that looks like that fits on my page. I'm gonna hold the control key and scroll and now I can see how, how it looks and I'm gonna turn my opacity back up to 100%. So I can actually come up here and type in 100 and hit enter to go back up to 100%. Now, if I wanna make any changes, I'm gonna to wanna to right click and ungroup this. It doesn't need to stay grouped, but it's nice to have it grouped when I move it. Wanna make sure I save this, wanna make sure I save it as an SVG file. Okay, so that's it for the holes assignment. That's what you can do. You can create some really cool effects, some illusion of depth. You can add more layers than me. You can do different things with your colors too. You don't have to use all in one monochromatic palette. Um, you can even do the gradient tool. Let me show you that real quick. So this one right here, I can click on the gradient tool and I've got a linear gradient or a radial gradient, like a circle. I'm gonna use the radial gradient. I'm gonna do it on the fill. And then I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag outwards. And you can see it's already adding a gradient, but it's by default it's going from the green that I had selected to transparent, which is a little weird. If I click on this node right here, I can set the green. If I click on this node right here, I can set the transparent. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set that to dark. So you can see on that layer, it goes from bright to dark, but it gets really, really dark really fast. So I can stretch this out and pull it out further and further so that it doesn't go all the way to black or I could switch this color from being not that dark to maybe just being a little darker. So you can see it's brightest here, maybe the light's coming through here, but around these edges it gets a little bit darker. You can pull it in a little bit here. You can see that it gets brighter to darker. So that can create the illusion of some shading too. All right, let's see what you can create and what sort of depth you can make.